It's a neighborly day in this beauty wood. Would you be my? Would you be my? It's a neighborly day in this beauty wood. Would you be my? Would you be my? It's a neighborly day. Hey yo, what up, what up? This is your boy JD Jones. I'm one of your hosts here at Neighborhood Talk. And we got my dog Trizzy the God on our on here tonight, man. I'm so excited, man. Trizzy, what's up with you, man? What it do, what it do. What it do? Man, Neighborhood well, man. Tales. JD. JD. Trizzy the God. Yes, we in here. Yes. Shout out to Mocha on the block, handling some business on business. But uh, absolutely a pleasure, man. To host this space with you, Trizzy the God. Excited about tonight. Uh, here at Neighborhood Talk, we want to welcome all of our listeners and supporters around the world. But allow us a moment to introduce ourselves. We are the newest, littest, and soon to be most we- influential Web3 platform to ever exist. Word, word. Not only is our space a place to display the newest and latest projects such as Neighborhood Tales, but we're going to share our spaces with the dopest guests. Whether you're heavily involved in Web3 or just learning about it, tonight is no exception. JD, you want to introduce who we got tonight? Absolutely. Yo, here to talk about everything Web3, Web3 Grammy. I'm excited to bring up Gaspo. Yo, Gaspo, man, how's it going tonight? Yeah, not too bad. Uh, it's uh, about 11 o'clock here, so I'm not quite as much energy as you're bringing. But yeah, no, it's, it's going well. Going well. Cool, man. Well, we'll, we'll absolutely uh, supplement for the energy that uh, you might not have, man, because it is late uh, over in the UK. So I definitely understand that. But a, a pleasure to have you here, man. Can you tell our, pleasure. our listeners pleasure. know where, you, uh, where you're from, man? Yeah. So uh, I'm just out of the UK at the moment, but I've been kind of crypto now for probably 18 months um, doing started off, you know, just general gaming with people. And then when I saw that not many people were making content, started doing videos, threads, spaces, um, and it's just kind of built on from there in the last uh, probably last year or so. It's been been getting bigger. So. Just as a, a short intro, the, the, the main things um, are spaces I do on Tuesday, where we've done now 30 weeks in a row, uh, talked to over 60 projects, uh, and then on the side, do like games and stuff like that uh, with videos. But yeah, that's a short intro, really. Yeah, man, heavily involved. Thank you, man, for that intro. Yeah, so Gaspot, uh just wanted to first start off with asking you about how and when did you get into the Web3 space? Yeah, so my um, uh, my brother is in the space. He got in before me, so he does game dev for a um, an NFT game. So he got me in. Um, I was sort of getting involved a little bit with what he was building, as well as kind of testing out the game with him. Um, off the back of that, his founder of the game wanted to get involved in kind of the Axie scene from a, a running a guild but he didn't want to do any of the admin of actually finding people to play. So he just asked um, all the people who kind of worked for him already for the game, if they'd be interested in playing. So we started uh, picking it like a couple of Axie teams up from there, but he didn't know anything about Axie. He just liked, you know, the general idea of it. So he got some advice on what to buy and his advice was about two seasons out of date. So we bought all of these axes, and they were just absolutely atrocious. So we never did very well, um, which was pretty embarrassing, to be honest. But just how it is sometimes. Yeah, that's dope. That's dope. I uh, I appreciate you know that aspect of how you got into Web three. You, you touched a little bit already on 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 gaming. Um, was was your was your? I mean, have you always been a gamer? Uh, and and if so, what which console do you do you did you begin your journey on? Yes, yeah, so I've I've always been a gamer. I've been mainly um, PC over console. Um, I've been playing since you know I was so I'm 34 now, and I think when the internet first started, we were playing uh, on the computer. I even remember in um, primary school, so like seven, eight years old, in one of the history classes, one of the teachers would play the very first Civilization. 
um, as kind of a way of doing history. So I'll always be playing games. Um, did dabbled a bit in making videos previously, but always got a bit sidetracked into other things. Um, but yeah, we're always looking for different ones to play. I think favourites probably MMOs. Sunk a lot of time into MMOs. Word, word. So, what was like one of your favorite your favorite games that you began playing? Or like, what's your favorite game now? Like, what's one? What are your top? Give, give me your top. Give me your top three. <laughs> okay, so there's an MMO which I. Every time I talk to a, an MMO project in Web3, I always bring up to see if they've played it, because essentially I just want someone to make a copy of that game. Uh, but it's called Life is Feudal, and it was very grindy. Um, like, even to build a house, you'd have to spend about a day just flattening the ground, so you'd have a flat surface to build your house on. So you had to invest a lot of time in it. But it did have then kind of more medieval elements about, you know, being a knight, shooting your bow and arrow, that sort of thing. So that was always quite quite a good one to get lost in. You could spend loads of hours. I think I probably got about 2,000 hours in that in the end. Um, unfortunately, Whoa. they went into an MMO um, and then they their payment system went bankrupt. So the whole game just imploded, which was a bit of a shame. Yeah, oh, Right, right. Um, and then you said three. I'm trying to think of the, the other three. Uh, Subnautica is a good one. Not sure if you've seen it, um, but that that's a really good one where you play you've crashed onto a water planet and you're the only survivor from a ship and you have to build yourself up to, to play, uh, to kind of escape the planet. And then the final one will probably be Fallout 4. Okay. They're, they're probably most influential ones I've played. Did you ever complete any of the games uh, in its entirety or, or, or did, 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 did the missions go incomplete? Uh, never complete them. So Fallout 4, <laughs> I've played about a 1,000 hours. And every time I get lost in side quests and like trying to follow up on characters, that by the time I go back to the story mode, I'm about 10 levels too high. And then it's not fun because it's not a challenge anymore. And then I stop and I restart. Because um, every time I play a game, um, I don't know what you guys are like when you play, but I always have to play it on the hardcore mode where if you die once, that's it. You're dead and you have to start from the very beginning again. Um, challenge. So that that could yeah, it can add a risk. But then sometimes you you don't want to start again after you spent so many hours. You got to take a break for a bit. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, I did have a follow up question uh, for our listeners who may not know what MMO games are. Can you can you maybe touch on that a little bit? Yeah. So MMO uh, massively multiplayer online games, normally kind of with RPGs or role play elements. So the the classic one that even if you've not played, most people have heard of World of Warcraft just because of how big it is. That's kind of the the, the classic. Um, one thing that we're kind of seeing in the Web3 space is that game needs so much depth that it's really hard to put one out quickly. So right now you see a lot more FPSs, um, so first-person shooters and card games because that they come out a bit easier. But when you're doing something like a on massive online world, which needs a lot of lore behind it, or if you're building anything that's got a lot of story in it, it takes a lot longer. So we haven't seen much last year with that, but I've talked to a few, and I think you've probably have seen in a few in the space, where um, they're getting to that stage of development now to be able to share those kind of games. Beautiful. Uh, thank you. Excuse me. Sorry, I was over here on my neighborhood juice. Um, so we got um, my next question I got for you is at what point did you decide that you wanted to go from just playing the games to actually becoming a content creator? Like what, what changed for you in that aspect? Um, so when I started playing Axie, uh, I wasn't very good. And I was watching people stream and I noticed that if you were streaming, people, if you like, as long as you let people, they would tell you how to play better in the chat. So if you'd stream, you'd kind of get free coaching. So I started streaming how I was playing. People started chatting. People started telling me what to do better. And I thought, actually, this is really good. I like this because I'm getting better at again. Um, but then when I got a bit bored with the kind of card game aspect, because it's never been my main genre i moved to playing other games and i was thinking and some of the people who i played actually with had never heard of them and i was thinking that they'd like these games if they saw them but they're just not seeing them enough so i Very thought great. that's when i started doing videos to introduce people to these new games was it was it hard getting into like the creator mode was it 
uh, what, what were some of the, the challenges that you may have faced initially that, that you had to get over? I think um, the, the fact that when I first started, a lot of the videos were still very much the um, clickbait thumbnails, clickbait titles, become a millionaire playing this game. And that was never really something I wanted to do because I've never particularly played any of them for the money side of things. Uh, it's been more for the enjoyment of it. So making content about the game initially was, wasn't was kind of what people were doing, but you can see a massive shift in the space now that everyone's talking about the game and tokens rarely get brought up or mentioned because they've got such a, left a bad taste in everyone's mouth as the bulls turn into a bear. Right, right, right. I, what what kind of games did you do you prefer like role playing or more more action fighting type games? I, th I think it depends on the mood. I think one one of the things we've seen a lot of in the space are kind of more simulation management games. So games where you do something, you come back an hour later, you do something, you come back. And I used to quite like those. I used to play them a lot for um, traditional games. But now I just don't have the time to keep remembering to come back that often. So I need something a bit more active. So whether it's um, there's quite a few first person shooter games, which are quite good. Recently played a medieval arena fighter, essentially, which was was very good. And then we're starting to see quite a lot of mobile games coming in as well, which is a lot easier when you're quite busy because you can just jump in five minutes and then just jump back out again. Right, right. I love that. Love that. Yo, uh, can you talk to us about Sephrodix? Uh, I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. Is it am I Sephrodix? Sephrodix? Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's Sephrodix. Um, my founder says it a lot better because he's Arabic, so he really rolls the R. <laughs> I don't uh, don't have that talent to do it. But yeah, that's um, so. From content creation, I was all I was involved in Sephrodix just from a community member. I was always quite interested in it. And then their marketing manager went off to start a new job. So they asked if I would be interested because they understood that I knew the content creation community quite well. I had a few connections with other games that I'd worked in, in the past, plus kind of making content. Um, I was already quite confident talking to people. So that, that's how I got into the marketing manager role there. But it's a, an RPG, catch them all, kind of think of the line of Pokemon. But the difference and the reason that we're using Web3 is, is that uh, all the creatures are unique to themselves. So there's 419,904 out at the moment in the alpha. Yay. And not a single one of them will be equal. So I don't know how clued up on Pokemon you are. But if you had a Pikachu and I had a Pikachu, they'd be the same. But in Sephrutix, they'd never be the same like that. They all look different with their own PFPs and they all have the, their own um, stats in game and their own skills. So your creature will always be your creature. It's not, no one's going to have one exactly like yours. And that's what, you know, I'm all about, you know, <laughs> that, that is, that is super cool. So thank you for talking about Sephrutix. Um, right. Would they, um, would they peek at you though? You are sorry? Would they peek at you? Would they peek at you? Uh, I don't know if that's a joke on the name Pikachu. Yeah, it's a joke. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no. yeah. Well. It's, it's, yeah, it's good. Um, I think I think part of the thing with it is it's like one of the things that you'll see, and I'm sure you guys will be doing it kind of with Neighbourhood Tales, is that the space is so small that if games only target for people already here, you've got about six people that you can sell to because there's, there's not that many of us knocking around. Um, but this Fruitix is going is on Google play store and you can play it without a wallet until you actually want to get involved in the crypto side. And I think that's something that everyone's starting to look towards now because the space is just so small that you're, you're not going to be able to make a sustainable game. Even if you've got literally everyone in crypto Twitter playing your game. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Okay, so um, let me ask you, what do you think about Web 2 and Web 3 game integration? I, I think eventually it will get to the point where now if you were telling someone you were playing um, a, a first-person shooter game against friends, 
you wouldn't have to say online. People would just assume it because that's kind of how the technology works. But if you went back, say, 10, 12 years, you'd have to mention that it wasn't a, a game you were playing in the same room as each other, maybe computers connected, that you it, an internet-enabled multiplayer game. But as we as it came kind of more of the norm, it, the kind of tech side dropped off because people aren't particularly interested in the tech side. So I think eventually gaming will, Web3 gaming will just become another part of uh, gaming in general. But right now it's an important thing to maybe not lead with, but mention because it does give those extra benefits to, to players. And it definitely has a different sense of community. Um, yeah. Right, beautiful. right. Beautiful. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. We've been talking. We've been asking our our guests this question, Gaspo, uh, just because we like to get the different perspectives of everybody has a different thought process when it comes to social media. But which social media platform do you think will be responsible for the mass adoption? Twitter, Instagram, TikTok. Any thoughts around that? Um, I don't think it will be Twitter. Wow. I think it's more likely to be TikTok or um, maybe YouTube. It won't probably won't be Facebook. Might might be Instagram. the The only reason is that you get quite siloed into crypto Twitter. So as you start following crypto people, I follow crypto people. I barely see anything that isn't crypto. So if you think of someone whose bubble and algo doesn't include crypto Twitter, they probably don't see anything we post. So I tried over Christmas. Uh, I did a give a, did several giveaways like as you know a Christmas bag, and they were all just traditional games on Steam to try and get more traditional gamers coming in. But what I found is even the people interacting with that giveaway were already people within Web three. It didn't get anyone who was kind of outside that bubble already. Whereas TikTok, it seems to be better at opening up your what you're seeing on your your algorithm rather than just being stuck in a single bubble and kind of seeing the same thing on repeat yeah i mean that's a and I, that's a, i'll tell you that's the first time we've ever heard you know twitter not being selected right everybody thinks twitter will be right, responsible right. you know we trisa you you've, you've heard it many times on the show everybody's thinking twitter but tiktok does right. have a, a unique algorithm so that you know, one thing when the mass adoption does have to start to happen, I can see TikTok. Uh, you know, it, it, especially because I'm a big believer that Web three gaming will be the in rather than any PFP kind of projects. But I don't think it will be the hardcore gamers kind of like someone who identifies as a gamer kind of thing that'll do it. I reckon that eventually it will be more mobile, hyper casual gamers. Um, kind of people who play Candy Crush. I think once we do a Web3 version of Candy Crush, where they're already used to in-game purchases, premium items such as that, that's what will make it more mainstream. Because if you're, say your mum's playing Web3 Candy Crush, yeah. Web3 doesn't seem nope. doesn't seem scary anymore. Like, right. it kind of reduces the risk. Because right now people see it as risky and that's why they don't get in. But as soon as it becomes mundane <laughs> and boring, people won't find it as risky. It's important to get perspectives from real life gamers, man. Web three gamers. Thank you for that. That is that's something that I'm going to be watching as I as I. Incredible. Exactly. Yeah. That's incredible. I mean, I can't wait to get you get you playing neighborhood tales, man. Um. So so Gaspar, let me ask you, what? How does it feel to be considered one of the top Web three influencers? <laughs> I probably wouldn't would go that far. I like I like hearing it. Come on, don't be modest. Don't. Be I think. Modest. I think because I was asked, I get asked this question, not so much, but when I, when I'm talking to um, other games and looking to promote other games that I work with, so I do the marketing for Fruitix, but then I also do like partnership things with other games. Um, and the question they always ask, because they want to understand what your motivation is, is kind of why you're doing it. Um, right now, I'm quite lucky that my situation, I don't need to make money from the content so i'm quite particular with what i pick up games wise um and i think that's kind of what i want people to think if they saw it i think i make is that they realize that i'm not just going to pick up any game i'll play games that i enjoy and if people can make some money off it if they can make some kind of to do with owning their skins and their assets that will be a bonus for them but that's never going to be 
the main reason I'd be picking up a game. Um, but I'm sure there is games that are going to be out there again when we get back into the bull, where people will be able to make a decent amount of money on them. It's just not what I'd be particularly interested in. So I, I think, to circle back to the question, I, I think it's more trying to get people to look for games for the what I'd call the right reasons and then support the projects that are trying to build something more sustainable, something more like a game rather than the kind of get rich quick schemes that we saw being sold a lot um uh, last year. Well you you dropped a lot of a lot of gems right there, man. So much knowledge and information on you know, your reasoning for Right. Genuine. Very genuine. Um but I, I get it. I get it. I'm Trizzy, I don't know about you, man. I'm really curious to know like a gamer like you, Gaspold, what motivates you to pick up a game since it is something you do in your leisure and then you talked about assets would you endorse or do you endorse play to play to earn games so i like play to earn as a stain it's kind of got a bad rap from it because it was mainly built on pontinomics i'm still i still believe that there will be a space for eventually i think the one thing we see a lot of in the space is that the people who come up and talk in Web3 Twitter spaces uh, and gaming Twitter spaces tend to be the people who, in the bull, were the people with assets lending them out to scholars. We don't particularly hear from people who were more the scholars who were there to try and earn some money while playing the game. I think it won't be ever as big as it was with people almost completely quitting their job and doing full-time just playing a computer game for the money. But I do think we'll get closer to it in a more sustainable way if you consider the idea of people selling their time to someone else rather than just grinding to get the money. So, for example, um, when you look at World of Warcraft, you'll have someone who wants to play level 70, but that will take months to play and they don't have the time, but they've got the money. So they end up buying a service from someone who has time, who then goes and plays the game essentially for them and then sells them the asset afterwards. They have to do it all shady on the grey market where you're not meant to. What Web3 will do is they'll be able to transfer wealth from the people who have money but don't have time to the people who have time but don't have money. Um, And I think that will be what the new play to earn model is, is that not everyone will be earning. Some people will be spending. And I think that's the way you'd be able to have a balanced economy for it. That is deep. That's beautiful. That's beautiful right there. So beautiful. I mean, you, you touched on it a little bit. You 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 see gaming gas old from a different aspect than maybe another gamer, right? Like you don't game for the aspect of money or what 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 motivates you to pick up a, a game whether it's Web 2 or Web 3, you know, can you touch on that? What motivated factors for you? Yeah, sorry, I think that's what you asked before, and then I got off on a tangent. Um, I think Web 2, it, I go back to my old classics. I've got hundreds of games on Steam, and I've not paid, played all of them. But there's a couple that I will always go back to. Web 3, when it comes to looking at a new project, I'm normally pretty open. Um, if someone messages me and... Like asks me to have a look at one, I'll normally take a look. If I've seen something on a timeline, I take a look. The majority of I, the accounts I follow on Twitter are games, regardless of what I've seen. I'll always tag them just to keep see how they're kind of going along because I like viewing a spread and doing a spread of them for the videos I do because I want to introduce people to different games. And I understand that I've got preferences for my games but that doesn't mean that I can't play something, see that what it's trying to do is good, even if maybe it's not a game for me. Um, so I do play a few games where I do a video and I think, oh, no, I can see this is going to be a good project. It's just maybe not something I'd spend my time on because it's not the right genre. Um, and then people get me into games often. Like There's loads of founders who I've talked to who maybe I wouldn't have played the game if I didn't know them because they've just been so genuine and we've talked loads and then I end up giving feedback. Some of them maybe haven't done as well as maybe they were hoping, but I don't know. I think that's part of the difference with web three is you get to talk to so many people who are the founders are gen are building the project that sometimes you end up getting invested in the people 
and that's why you end up playing it. So my first ever kind of proper testing of a game was someone who I met in a um, an NFT shill space, and it was all PFPs, all PFPs. And then they got up and were talking about their new mobile game. So I played it. I think it was one of the first to play it. Gave them some feedback, and then we still talk about that game now that she's developing. Um, and I don't think I would have given the game a try if I hadn't got to know them. So I think I think that's one of the genuine bits that come out of Web three. Beautiful. Thank you. <laughs> cool. So yeah, uh, wrap it up here, Gaspo man. I appreciate you again, just dropping all of the knowledge regarding Web three gaming. Uh, but you touched on this a little bit. Can you talk to us about what you think in the future? gamers will prefer will it be mobile desktop console gaming any thoughts on what the future looks like for that yeah i, I think the future is going to be mobile i think there'll be a lot of people who are kind of hold out and stay on pc so if i've got a couple of hours to kill i will play my pc because it's better essentially but the majority of my time i probably end up playing across mobile because of the ease so i can just pick up i can play um, there's a lot more games coming out now, so it's not a quite as restricted as it used to be with mobiles, where they're all just a clone of each other. Um, as phones get better, they can handle a lot more, so there's a lot more variety in it. And I think it's just more accessible for people. Um, I talked to one founder, and they were talking about when they were in... I'm going to get the country wrong. It was either India or Brazil, um, but essentially they were in areas where the majority of people lived in kind of like makeshift houses they had electricity but they didn't have much else but on the night people would stay up watching the houses for everyone else and what they saw was people doing this and then there'd be a kid sat down next to them with a phone playing Fortnite, which just looked so out of place to the rest of it but that just shows how kind of accessible mobile gaming is becoming to every area in the world appreciate that so um so just a question another question about the um what you think about the gaming of web three like where do you see it in the next like say three to five years where do you see web three gaming so I think the the thing with web three gaming is we're not going to be able to rush it like a lot of people are saying oh maybe a year maybe two years I I think it's going to be longer because of how long it takes for games to come out how long it takes for a game to come out and be kind of stable how long it takes for Web3 as a whole, not just the gaming side, to lose the rug and the scam reputation that it's got outside the bubble right now. And I think that will be done by more consistently average games. Like I'm not saying there's going to be loads of great games, but I think if the average of the quality of games increases, it will bring more people in because, again, there'll be that less, less of the risk. But I think what we'll end up bringing in is the kind of 13 to 15-year-olds now who, as they play and as they grow up, crypto gaming and web3 gaming isn't something they're moving into it's something that's always been there so essentially we're just waiting for people to get older um and used to it always of being there for them so it's not something they have to make a change for it's just normal to them yeah we were talking about that last time uh how we're looking for the youth to usher in uh and help with this mass adoption so that that is key that you you, you brought that up uh, but thank you for, for you know, talking to us about Web3 Gaming. Uh, we're going to move really, really quickly over to the next portion of our show here at Neighborhood Talk. It's called Cap or Fat. Cap being false, fact being well fat. And uh, we're going to ask you a series of questions and you respond cap or fat based on what you think. All right. Uh, so, okay. all right, bet. All right. So the first cap or fat question for you, Gaspot, is real gamers use keyboards instead of controllers. Cap or fat? Uh, true. Uh, what was the true fact? Uh, fact. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a fact. Yeah, fact. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, fact. All right. You got to tell us why. You got to. You got to tell us why. What's the What's the benefit? <laughs> oh, it's just you've got so many more options. I do think it depends on the genre, but the majority of the games I played, you just wouldn't have the buttons on the controller, or you wouldn't have enough fingers. Um, the dexterity you can get with a mouse and a keyboard, and the range of movement is so much wider than you can with a controller copy, copy. copy yeah all right and uh the, the last cap of fact play to earn games 
will be will help with the mass adoption? Uh, cap. I I don't think they will. I think if anything, they will scare people off. Um, I see them being more of a niche project, project, a niche product in the end, or maybe a smaller part of a larger game where, like I mentioned, people with money will give people with time that money. Um, so it won't be mass adoption, but it will probably be part of it. Part of it. Uh, it's dope. Appreciate you giving your perspective on that. Um, such an honor, man, to have you on our show here at Neighborhood Tales, dropping all of the, all of the knowledge, coming talking about Web3 Gaming. We really appreciate you. Uh, any final words for our listeners? How can they reach you? Uh, yeah, so for, Twitter is probably my main base. Um, I tweet there if I'm putting anything on YouTube or, or off to Twitch. Um and I think that's about it, really. Just keep an eye out. And then my only other thing would be if you find any projects that you enjoy, um, make sure to share them with people. Like there's a lot of projects out there that struggle with the kind of community building, struggle with getting the reach. Um, and they're good projects. And I think it just is more on us as kind of end users to share them with people once we find something we like. Love that. Love that. Love that, man. Again, uh, what a, what an honor it is to have such a gamer, such such a a Web three uh, knowledgeable person uh, on our show. We we really appreciate all of the knowledge you have shared. Um, but we're right back at it. Uh, Neighborhood tells we are on the move. We are lining up the littest guests. We do the we we have the littest and newest platform and, and we're just excited about what's to come all you need to do to stay up, up to date with us is hop over to our our twitter page nh tales click the link in our bio click and join our join our discord we're giving away a hundred thousand dollars in cash prizes you want to make sure you're up to date on all of our latest exclusive drops um it is such a fun environment our discord uh, we get a chance to watch movies together uh, movie night, I know that's coming up, man. Uh, one of my favorite things to do with our project is just build our community. Uh, and so excited about continuously doing that. Trizzy, man, we got Trizzy the God on the, on hosting tonight. One of our founders, we got Chiz, man. Uh, what what an honor, man, to, to to host this space with you as well, Trizzy. Y'all can find me everywhere at Official J.D. Jones, man. And it's been real. Yeah, yeah, appreciate you, Gas Gaspar. We do appreciate you, you and your knowledge and all that you brought to the spaces tonight um jd it definitely was an honor to work with you tonight um yeah you can follow me at trizzy the god make sure you guys follow nh tales everywhere every site and um we do appreciate you guys until next time peace it's a neighborly day in this beauty wood would you be mine would you be mine? It's a neighborly day in this beauty wood. Would you be mine? Would you be mine? It's a neighborly day.